Hello, thank you for joining me for my artist talk here today at Callaway Fine Art and Consulting. Um, my show here is called Wanderings and it's a joint show with the artist Rogers Naylor whose works you see here. Um, I want to thank Susan Calloway and Madeline and everyone at the gallery here uh, for putting together this beautiful show and also for inspiring me to try something new which was to create large landscape and cityscape paintings. Um, I really enjoyed that experience. I normally work with figurative um, and sort of literary and historical scenes mostly. So for my artist talk, I'm going to be focusing on a few paintings that have figures, but also bring in the theme of landscape and travel in different ways in the different works. So I'm going to start by talking about this painting here, which is called Raha and Matthew with the Tabula Rogeriana, um, a matter of perspective. So this painting really came together kind of gradually over time, it sort of developed organically rather than being one specific idea that I had at the beginning. My initial idea for it was I wanted to set up kind of a Vermeer inspired composition. So with this intimate interior space and the lighting coming from a, a window on the side. And I invited two people to come over and model for it. Um, they're both musicians in real life, so I thought it would be cool to set up kind of a concert or music lesson scene. Uh, the, the man is Matthew, who's my partner in real life, and this is Raha, who's a friend and she's a professional singer. And when she came, she brought these instruments with her. She brought a lute and this Persian instrument called a tambour. And while I was taking photos for this painting, she was playing and singing Persian songs on the tambour. So it was just the most lovely uh, experience to have that whole atmosphere. So as I was doing sketches and kind of figuring out what the composition would be, I realized that I really liked this sort of play between the European kind of Renaissance composition and then this idea of like the Middle Eastern and Persian um, music. And so I had planned out and basically painted the entire painting, but I still have this blank space on the wall behind the figures. And I realized it would be the perfect spot for like a painting within a painting or maybe a map. Uh, but I was looking for something that would really help the theme of the painting and bring that to life. So I was looking for something that would speak to this idea of kind of East and West coming together, like Europe and the Middle East interacting. And I looked for maps from the Renaissance, like when this style of painting would be, but I didn't find anything. But then I eventually stumbled upon this map that's actually from 1154. And it was created for the King of Sicily, uh, King Roger II of Sicily, who employed a geographer, um, an Arab geographer, whose name was Mohammed Al Idrisi. And this was a 15 year project where the, the geographer and the king worked together to interview all the explorers and travelers who came through at that time. And they wanted to come up with the most accurate map of basically what was like the accessible world at that time. So this map remained the most accurate map of that area for three centuries after it was created. And it might not look very familiar because the way it was created, the north is at the bottom and the south is at the top. So if you look closely, you can see this area is Europe, and then this is the top of Africa up here, and this is the Middle East right here. So I had a lot of fun just looking closely and trying to figure out where each country was um, when you look at it in this 
what we think of as an upside down perspective. And yeah, ultimately I found that the map was just the perfect thing both to bring the whole composition together and to bring this concept um, together so as well. Now I'm gonna talk about this painting here. Um, this painting is entitled Jane Eyre, I am no bird and no net ensnares me. So I've always really loved the book Jane Eyre. Uh, I think especially just the main character is such an amazing person. She's very wise and very true to herself throughout the whole book. She always, she's like really quiet all the time, but then when she says things, they're just like completely honest and kind of pithy and not what people expect to be coming out of her mouth. So it's just very inspiring to encounter that character in literature. And also the writing style of the book is just incredible. It's like from the first page, you're just hooked and drawn into this atmospheric world. And you like, you know, even though it's old and you know, from the Victorian era, it just like draws you in. Um, so this painting was inspired by a specific quote from Jane Eyre, which I'm gonna read to you now. This is, uh, Mr. Rochester and Jane talking and Mr. Rochester says, Jane, be still. Don't struggle so like a wild frantic bird that is rending its own plumage in its desperation. And then Jane says, I am no bird and no net ensnares me. I am a free human being with an independent will, which I now exert to leave you. So I think that quote really exemplifies Jane's character in an amazing way, because partly because she's so independent throughout the book and she's risen above her circumstances in so many ways by just taking charge of her destiny. Like she comes from this um, like horrible boarding school where she doesn't have any opportunities, but then she decides to just put an advertisement in a paper to you know advertise her services as a governess and then she gets the job um so it's just really really cool how she takes that initiative uh, throughout the whole book and is so self-reliant the quote also brings to light this theme of birds so the theme of birds is so important throughout jane eyre um, lots of different species of birds are mentioned and a lot of characters are compared to birds as well. So I tried to incorporate that motif in my painting. You can see there are birds in the carpet here. There are birds on the cushions of the seats. And also in the stained glass window, I ended up designing little stained glass uh, panels that incorporated sort of my stylized version of specific species of birds that appear in the book. So this is a linnet, this is a lark, this is a nightingale and a robin there. Now to create this scene, I wanted to create this sort of mysterious Gothic interior and also the kind of like caged bird feeling where there's this window and then there's the outside world. And I actually had a lot of fun with this. This is the first painting where I've done this, but I ended up creating a model of this interior space because, you know, I don't have a, a gothic castle that I can just go to and paint in. Um, but I, I took my initial inspiration from a window I had seen in an English country house that had this alcove with these seats uh, beside the window. But then I came up with my own design for the Gothic window. And then I ended up cutting it out of cardboard and creating like a box. Uh, and then I made some little other boxes for the seats on the side. And I actually put like a little doll in there to represent Jane Eyre. And then I shone a light through the window uh, so that I could see the angle of the light that would hit the floor and the walls. So that was a really fun part of the process and then I actually did a lot of the sketching and painting from that model and then also combining it with photos I had taken for the figure. 
the landscape outside the window, it's not a specific place, but it's inspired by a lot of my travels, um, especially in England, where I love to visit medieval ruins. So especially I was thinking of this one place, Fountains Abbey, which is in Yorkshire, which is this um, just like massive, but completely ruined ancient abbey. Um, it has this amazing Gothic feeling. So yeah, definitely inspired by my travels in a few different ways. I think I'll talk about this miniature painting now. This is a painting of the character Ariadne from Greek myths. And this came about as a result of my travels, but in a different way from some of the other works. Because last summer I was in Italy and Greece. And when I was in Florence, I stopped by this famous art supply store there, Zeki. And of course, I had to buy the historical pigment tubes of paint that they had there. So I got some genuine Naples yellow, some genuine uh, vermilion, and a tiny little tube of genuine uh, ultramarine blue, which is made from lapis lazuli. And then also in Florence, I found this frame, which was at this, this shop where they do their own gilding. And I was like, I need to buy that frame so I can make a miniature painting for it. And then later that summer, I did a residency in Greece and I was thinking a lot about Greek myths. And I realized that this character Ariadne would be the perfect character to paint using these like precious materials. So yeah, if you're not familiar with Ariadne, she was a princess in Crete who helped the hero Theseus um, to find his way through the labyrinth to defeat the Minotaur. And she did that by giving him a golden thread that would help him find his way. So in this painting, and then I also used uh, two different kinds of real gold on this painting. So. I used gold leaf, which comes in really thin sheets. And then I also used shell gold, which is particles of gold um, that are in some kind of medium and you can just paint them onto the surface. So I think her crown is gold leaf and then the other gold details are shell gold. And with my miniature paintings, I get a lot of questions about what brushes I use. So I brought two two of my favorite brushes. Um, this is a Kalinsky Sable brush, and it's amazing because it has these long bristles, but when, when they have paint on them, they come to a really fine point. And when I first, when I was in art school, somebody actually gave me a brush like this as a birthday present, and it just kind of changed my life. That was the moment when I started doing miniature paintings. And then this is another, a uh, really tiny brush. It's a triple zero um, from Windsor and Newton. And this is really good for the tiny details as well. Um, yeah, and I just think that something that really draws me to miniature paintings is because they're so tiny, they feel very precious. And it's like this, you know, really minute attention that goes into them. And they, yeah, they just feel like these kind of jewel-like objects. So. I felt like using the precious materials for this miniature made sense. Um, and for my other miniatures as well, I feel that way about them. Like I do a lot of scenes from travels and scenes from DC on uh, New York City and DC Metro cards, uh, which you can see more of those on the website. Thank you all for joining me for my artist talk today. Um, as I mentioned, there are a lot of large landscape and city paintings um, in this show as well, so I want to invite you to view those online. Uh, the website is calloayart.com slash wanderings. Um, and yeah, if there's anything that really catches your eye or you want to spend more time with it and get really close to it, they're all available for purchase as well. Um, yeah, so thank you again for joining us. <laughs>